I was very, very, very intentional with still being an evil babe. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well. I hope you're blessed. I hope you're living life. Okay. I will be discussing, or rather, I will be telling you guys how I maintained my eroticness. You know, living in the UK for. 11 years going to 12 years um how i basically stuck with my culture and maintained my evil self all these years so yeah stick around and i hope you enjoy this video I came to the UK in 2010 so I came here and I was 13 years I went to secondary school I started here they pushed me all the way back to year 8 so when I left Nigeria I was in SS1 but because the UK here they do according to age according to like how old you are depending so i was born october so i was like a i am a winter baby so the academic year starts from september to um august so that makes a year group they pushed me down to year eight and i was so pissed i was so 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 annoyed because when they asked me i was like yeah i was in year nine i was in year nine i was in year nine so i started year nine for like a week and then the next monday was it a friday and then the lady was like no your birthday shows that you know you're in year eight and i was just like <laughs> But anyways, my first day, like my first week in year nine, I met an Igbo girl, but she didn't know how to speak or she told me she didn't know how to speak Igbo, but she understood the culture and everything. So it was like, yikes, like <laughs> you don't know how to speak. So I started school. I didn't have Igbo friends. Um, yeah. So how did I really maintain? my Igbo self i still spoke Igbo at home so i still spoke Igbo at home and i tried to teach my cousins and um people around me i guess uh, my friends i was i would try as much as possible to speak Igbo to them whether they would understand or not i used to watch a lot of nollywood movies as well so um a lot of movies on iroko tv come on when do we used to have their free trial thing back in the day you know what i'm saying so i used to watch a lot of those Iroko tvs all those local movies i still i used to watch them and i still listen to songs you know flavor fino and the likes you know so i can't shower i was very 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 intentional with still being an evil babe like I was extremely intentional with it. Like you can ask anyone, you can ask any of my friends. I would intentionally say things in Igbo and they'd be like, what was that? And I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> but sometimes I didn't do it on purpose, but it was just right at the tip of my tongue. So yeah, I maintained my Igbo self by being the authentic me. Um, I met a lot of people down the line. They were like, um very excited to kind of lose their ebotic accent their nigerian accent me i was holding on to it i was holding on to it and then i was kind of very fortunate enough as well to um meet girls um of african heritage who were also proud to be africans at such a young age so that didn't bother me like in the sense that i had to I, I had to feel like i belonged because i was in a circle of people that knew who they were and where they are from even though they were not evil but we were very kind of self-aware that we are 
blacks we are africans you know what i'm saying so we all kind of stuck to our roots and i also had a teacher um she's yoruba yeah two two teachers that were quite close you know they were yoruba and then we used to speak to them like in our authentic language authentic self and they really encouraged our nigerianness if you know what i mean so i didn't feel like i had to change myself or change who i was or how i spoke a lot of people were not kind of self-aware at such a young age um so i was kind of well so i was a bit privileged in knowing who i was at such a young age not a lot of people have that privilege make sure you know who you are as a person and also um understand yourself stick to your roots watch movies watch shows speak to your parents obviously even though i was living here i was still very much in contact with people back home so i didn't feel like i had to change myself i didn't feel like i had to um try to fit in because the people that i was around they were their authentic self as well so yeah you know that's basically it and it wasn't easy i'm going to say it was not easy being or trying to be my authentic self obviously now my accent has changed but it wasn't intentional like i will still be talking and sometimes my ebotic self comes out unprovoked because i can't help it so <laughs> so i'm speaking now like this because i think it just came naturally if you stay in a place for a long time in a certain kind of region the people around you speak a certain way you automatically pick it up and um i was still kind of in my formative years as well like i said i came when i was 13 so i was still learning things i was still learning things about myself as well so my accent just naturally changed and i tried as much as possible to hold on to my erotic self i tried as much as possible to speak erotically i never wanted to change my accent but it happened it happened and there's nothing i can do there's absolutely nothing i can do about it but i am still the original evil babe i'm still living the evil self you know i can still speak my language sometimes a little bit of a struggle in the sense that because i don't speak it all the time um it's hard um you forget certain words you forget like sentence structure but now i'm getting not even i'm getting better like i know my language okay don't don't listen to everything i'm saying i know my language because when i speak to my parents when i speak to my siblings when i speak to people when i speak to people that are like um native Igbo speakers it flows it flows like flows like water it flows so you know my language is still there it's still intact i'm very much in touch with my roots with my culture um yeah so i guess what you have to get out of this video is essentially be intentional with learning and maintaining your language your culture and your heritage okay even when like for example in secondary school when playing nigerian music wasn't cool okay it was not cool and people were listening to Nicki minaj and and um justin bieber and mindless behavior don't get me wrong i like those people but my go-to music then was literally just peace square flavor tiwa savage um fino you know those people in the industry banky w and it was just like those are the kind of music that I was listening to i intentionally just gravitated towards those kind of entertainment like i didn't i really just blocked out all the other things you know 
I used to watch like Golden Ultimate Search, Nigerian Idol, um, all these Nigerian shows like Nollywood, Sky 31 something, 319 back in the days, um, African Magic, um, AIT, Ben TV. So all these Nigerian channels that I, I was watching, okay, you know, it's just I didn't get into too much about like the British culture, like watching um, EastEnders or watching Coronation Street. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. You know, I did watch a bit of Neighbours. I think Neighbours was Australian show. You know, Home and Away. I got into that, but essentially I kind of surrounded myself my entertainment the things that i consumed you know to be typically of the african heritage of the african kind of entertainment industry so you know like i said be intentional with it you know know who you are know where you're coming from it's hard to maintain yourself maintain your your accent maintain your language maintain your heritage your roots when you are in a whole different geographical location it's exhausting and especially when you don't have kind of like your friends be of the same culture as you it's it's, it's hard but i think i was kind of fortunate enough to to be here and you know nasi bonasa tayo for my you know and i'm thankful that i never lost that like i am so thankful because now i have my Igbo friends you know and we are just loving the culture loving being Igbo. and now being nigerian is so cool now being Igbo is just it's seen as it's so cool like now i'm meeting more Igbo people and i'm just so thankful that you know that side of me didn't disappear but it didn't disappear because i was intentional about it not disappearing and i'm just so thankful for that you know because now here i am doing youtube videos promoting the Igbo culture and the Igbo language because i had it in my heart i had it god put it in my heart god said you're an Igbo babe and an Igbo babe you shall be forever i don't think that i did anything specifically except for just being intentional so that's basically it i hope you enjoyed this video so if you happen to be like me you know that moved at such a young age to a different country in the diaspora what did you do to maintain your your heritage what is it that you did to maintain your language if you were able to speak um yeah let me know and this is also me trying to encourage a lot of um nigerians a lot of Igbo people traveling outside of nigeria you know i do encourage you to maintain your culture because you don't know who you're going to meet tomorrow you don't know where god is going to bless you from i'm not saying you still have to integrate um and try to fit in into your new surrounding into your new environment but don't like completely disregard where you're coming from because no don't do that um yeah with that said you know i hope you guys continue to watch my videos if you haven't already subscribed please do subscribe and share with your friends share with your family members and i will see you in my next one okay 